I'll let you explain what you got here. Um, about a month ago or so, um, Debbie in, um, contacted me and Matt Peterson from Pitney Bowes. They have been having trouble with their postage machine and the service on it. Um, not getting service from Hessler and then um, not getting it fixed once people came in and serviced it. I haven't had any trouble in the auditor's office other than it's becoming outdated and um, the cost and everything. Um, we did cut the budget from 170000 down to 100000 the last year out of the budget. Um, the main reason was because people just don't mail things like we used to. But everything that comes out of the court system has to be set, certified, and it's causing Deb, the other Deb, to go to the post office almost every day because of the equipment they have there. So um, based upon the lack of service and the having to go to the actual post office every day, um, Debbie wanted to look into the cost of updating the machines to be leased machines and not purchase the machines. And then speaking with Matt on that, I said, well, that seems crazy because then we would never own them. And he is, his say, saying to me was, why would you ever want to own something two years old when it's not going to be usable at that time? If we go on a lease, they will come in then and replace the machines to keep us up to date with what actually needs to be mailed out from each office so we don't end up with otherwise known as the junk in the auction that no one wants. So we don't ever really want to use a thing where we actually own the equipment again. We'll just want to upgrade it respectfully every so many years to accommodate for our <coughs> usage of the machines. So what is your recommendations? Um, after viewing the um, costs from Pitney Bowes, I was going to have Matt talk. Um, the cost is a little bit higher over at the clerk's office than what we're currently paying. Um, under over in my office, but I just felt it's not a huge difference. But if the service is that much better and all in one unit, it would save her trips to the postage office, which is time on top of that that we don't need accommodate for um, to go to Pitney Bowes. So I would favor and we have the money appropriated for the cost of postage to go with Pitney Bowes. So the budget line postage deals with actual postage and the equipment that goes with it, even though they're two different things. That's correct. Okay. Debbie, did you want to say anything? Uh, basically what I guess what I would have to say concerning this is um, on our end of it, we're not necessarily um, dealing with the money aspect of it, but the service aspect of the equipment. Um, in the past couple of years, we've had quite a bit of problems with the uh, machine, um, calling Hasslers a lot, um, asking them to come out to look at the machine, to fix the machine. Um, quite often, they'll send somebody out that doesn't know what they're doing, not able to fix it, having to wait the following day for someone else to come out. The, the situation with us is it's extremely important for the mail that comes down from the courts. That mail has to go out that day. And when you're having problems with the equipment and having problems having the company come in and fix it, the frustration that goes along with it, also, I guess the frustration on Hassler's side of it too, because when we call now, we've kind of got this reputation, oh, it's you again. And it's just very frustrating. And uh, so when Matt had called and had uh, sit down and talked to us, I was very interested in what he had to say. And that's why I had contacted Jenny and Matt had contacted <coughs> Jenny also. So are we talking two units here then? One for this building, one for Yes, one we for do office. all of the mail done for the courthouse and the mail for the sheriff's department and for probation. And I believe that's it. And by doing the mail for them, what is exactly does that mean? The mail is brought into our office 
all uh, different offices bring it in specifically to our office. Then around 2.30 every day, one of my staff members then runs the mail, the postage for all of the mail for those units. Okay. And then we are also responsible to take that mail to the post office physically. So we can't eliminate a trip to the post office. There will always be a trip to the post office to take it at the end of the day. The things that we're looking into also, and Matt could probably explain a little bit more, is getting a different scale that um, will help us with heavier packages to be able to weigh them and to be able to put the appropriate amount of postage on it instead of taking heavier packages to the post office and then coming back. You get weighed and then you get right. a price. And then exactly. You, then you can, is that what, is that how it works? You, you, you run it over there, you get it weighed, they tell you it takes this much postage, you walk it back and you put the postage on. And then walk it back. Now, is that an everyday occurrence? No. But does it happen? Yes. Do you deal with register and re return receipt requested? Yes. Deb can tell you more. Because we, we do the signature confirmation. It's like a certified, but it's um, we put it in a plastic sleeve. It's um, cheaper. We it's did cheaper. research. It's cheaper it than the a, certified mail. It's a cheaper yeah, route of going. Pretty expensive. Yeah. It's a so signature we, confirmation, so we still get the confirmations that is required. Yeah. Um, but it has saved the county a lot of money. Does that take a trip to the post office? Yes, I take those every day. They're taken over, they run them through the machine, they sign a paper that I have printed out showing how many I've taken and who they went to, okay. and it's stamped by the post okay. office. So we will not eliminate that. Oh, trip. no. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. benefits to doing with Pitney Bowes. Supplies are less expensive. I guess this is the author says supplies are less expensive than current vendor and do not have a shelf life. Why that seems to be kind of ridiculous. Why what do you mean by I can that? I can speak to that. Um, basically the technology that they use uh, for the particular meter that they have over there with the supplies the technology is as such where from the date that you put that supply in there it has a one year shelf life on it, not whether it's out of ink, but for example, from one year from the date that you put it into that cartridge or that you put it in there, it will say one year later that the ink cartridge has expired as opposed to it is out of ink. Um, and that's just simply some technology that's fairly unique to, uh, to Hassler, uh, whereas our cartridges basically have um, no shelf life on them, meaning that they don't expire, you just use all the ink out of them, uh, as opposed to having a, a one-year shelf life. Okay. There were some other frustrations we were having too, Matt, and maybe you can help with this, mm -hmm. but it had something to do with the chip every year. Could Correct. you explain that yep. a little bit sure. to, to the commissioners? Um, and, and again, specific to that Hassler technology, um, there are some rate updates that get done from the uh, United States Post Office. Uh, Anytime they change rate structure, or if they move back in January, they move from 44 to 45 cents. Um, the current Hassler technology in the clerk's office, as well as in the auditor's office, to be able to accommodate those changes, you have to physically receive a chip in from Hassler and physically install that chip in the postage machine, and that updates your rates. Well, there's a there's a cost to that, which I've outlined uh, in the uh, kind of the current situation um, overview. But how that differs with Pitney Bowes is any type of changes moving forward, whether it's USPS changes, whether it's rate updates. Uh, for one, uh, we don't charge for those, any additional. That's just included in the price of the, uh, the agreement. And then in addition to that, all of our uh, updates get deployed via a, a software download, whether that's a, a fax line or an internet connection. So any, any, that's the fairly unique thing about our technology is it does not require a physical piece of hardware to be coming in um, to change those rates. And I know that was something that... It, um, it was a frustration, and Deb could, could testify to this. Um, we have two different chips. The auditor's office has one. <clears throat> we have one that comes in in the mail that I put in. The other one that is attached to the machine itself, I actually have to call them and have someone come out. Remind them to yes, come out. Yes, remind them to come out. And 
electronically do that because if they send us that, it's an additional, I think, $375 for this chip. So he just um, comes out and does it and leaves. But in the process, I have to call praying that there's someone available that day for them to do that so that we can run our mail because otherwise my scale doesn't work properly. there's an option at the end of a 24 month lease to buy this there is, there is an option but talking with, uh, with Jen a little bit that was something that I again I, I can't mandate what you guys do at the end of the lease but my recommendation is always to especially mailing equipment is to lease just strictly because of the way technology changes um, if there's something new that comes out uh, that would better accommodate your needs. Uh, a lease gives you a lot more flexibility than a purchase, as well as if your volume uh, significantly increases or decreases, you're not locked into the situation when you own it, which is kind of the situation uh, the clerk's office has found themselves in currently, just being that they own a piece of equipment and they pay maintenance and meter rental on it, uh, as opposed to having a lease structure to where at the end of the 24 months, uh, you have a little bit more flexibility in your, uh, like I said, you're not really tied to that particular piece of technology. We have an extended warranty on it for the next two years if we decide to, or is it warranty up after two years? Warranty as far as the, the service? The or, or service or you oh, name yeah. It. I mean, depending on which route you go, um, they basically have a uh, the ability to, again, you can take ownership of it and then just strictly pay uh, like a prorated meter rental and um, maintenance cost on it if, if that's the route you continue to go. Um, but typically, uh, I, I never recommend anything without any type of maintenance program. And again, the maintenance program is built into the cost of it, uh, whereas the, the purchase, you, you pay like an annual uh, service agreement uh, and then a quarterly meter rental charge, similar to maybe what the structure they have currently. But the, 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 again, the nice part about the lease is that everything is wrapped in together um, in one payment, uh, one quarterly payment. And then again, at the end of it, and I guess to answer your question, as far as the end of it, you could um, you could choose to elect to have a um, a service agreement on there, and, and I would highly recommend that that's something um, that you would have. It, as far as a warranty goes, um, I guess as far as any type of warranty claims, anything that's ever wrong with the equipment, if the equipment ever needs service, we replace it. Uh, if we can't replace it or fix it, we which I, I can't ever remember at a time we've we've ever had to. You know, resort to that, but we've never had to replace the equipment. But if that, for whatever reason, does happen and we can't fix it, we replace it with with brand new or, or better equipment. So option number one is ninety dollars a month. That's correct. That's for the okay. that was the recommendation we made from the uh, for the auditor's office. Okay, so ninety dollars a month for two years. In that two years, there's no maintenance fees. That's correct. It's all covered. Mm -hmm. The only time there'd be a maintenance fee is if we decided at the end of the 24 months we're going to keep it, and, and it breaks down. Correct. Our alternative choice is to get another unit at the current pricing for another 24 months. And, and just to clarify a little bit, th this particular program, um, there was two different programs I used. Um, obviously, the, the first program I, I wanted to lead with because it was it was all inclusive and it was significantly less price. Um, basically, the on the second option is the option that allows you to, to take ownership at the end. The first option is just a straight term rental, um, which again covers all your maintenance, your rate updates, um, the the meter rental. Um, on this first option. The second option, again, this is under the, the state and local uh, government contract that we've got with the state of Indiana that uh, Whitley County can take advantage of. This is a 0% financing lease that, uh, that you can take ownership of it. The first one, again, and, and again, that's why I gave two options, was just really to, um, I guess, give you guys some options as far as what you wanted to do technology-wise moving forward. But again, my recommendations typically are always especially with the mailing equipment and the way things are changing so, so rapidly within this industry, is that you know, owning the equipment, 
typically isn't what I recommend unless there's some real specific reasons that you would have to want to be locked into a particular version of equipment. So I guess just to kind of compare and contrast the two, uh, the first one is just a straight rental program um, that again covers everything, uh, equipment maintenance, meter rental, uh, and the updates. And then the second one was the 0% uh, financing that I used uh, between the two, um, given that there is uh, a, a option for a um, ownership at the end. And then also, too, uh, I should note, too, that, that the first option is, is a factory certified option, uh, meaning that this has been uh, given a stem to stern inspection. Um, it's, it's used. Correct. Okay. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So basically, all of these are, uh, are factory certified yeah. uh, on okay. the first option, and then the I second gotcha. option is new. All right. Fancy word. Okay. Do we so, have any other type that involves equipment? No. So we have no track record of how they do. One thing I, I will mention as far as our, our service technicians, um, all of our service technicians are A plus certified. Uh, they are dispatched by a uh, GPS handheld device. Uh, so response time is very quick. Um, they also carry um, as many parts as they can in their vehicle. Uh, so if they've got common problems, if they've got um, Maintenance items, for example, if there's, you know, after, you know, large volumes of mail run through, uh, there's cleaning kits that they carry along with them. So typically they're able to have all the parts that they need with them in their vehicle. And then also, too, from a response time uh, standpoint, um, again, they're dispatched via GPS, so things are very uh, quick as far as, the, uh, as far as the response time goes. How many service people do you have in the area? <coughs> Well, uh, we've, I've actually got two, two folks that uh, I work with in my office, but that's them, again, being the, the, that they've got a, the GPS. If somebody is within, for example, let's say our Fort Wayne techs are maybe um, all the way up north, um, basically the, the, the service tech that's going to be dispatched is the one that, that's closest. But we've got uh, several in Ohio that sometimes uh, cross over into Indiana. We've also got ones that come out of Michigan, uh, but I've got two specifically that I uh, work with uh, at our office here in Fort Wayne. Do you have any of these machines, the option two machines? Um, no, wait a minute, okay. I, I, I'm just going to stick to the auditor's office. Sure. Right this, right this second. Do you have any of these option two machines out in government use currently that we could we could talk to that you know the government and see how happy they are with the equipment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this particular model, the reason I, I went with this one um, more of what we, what, what we place in the government agencies. Typically, um, there's a little bit of a larger unit than this. Typically, there's a, in a lot of the counties that I deal with, they have um, basically a larger centralized unit that everyone come in, uh, that all the mail different comes into. But yeah, we've definitely got um, people that use this particular unit, uh, as well as um, the other unit that we're recommending as well um, for, the, uh, for the clerk's office. I think we'd like a reference list, mm -hmm. if that would be okay. Sure. Okay. So do you want to wait on this until you get that? Or? Well, I think I think so. And I think, like, to, like we said, we don't have any Pitney Bowes equipment now in the county. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys. I do want to. I do want to go on to the next page, though, because I want to. I want to make sure I understand. For for the auditor's office, option one was the used machine. Whereas for the clerk's office, option two is the is the used machine. Right. Correct, and, and that's actually something to where we, from a budgetary standpoint, after working with um, both Debbie's <coughs> and Jen, it, it, we really just you know as far as your actual needs. Um, option two gives you a little bit more uh, bells and whistles, for example, uh, as far as being able to print on the outside of the envelope and things like that. Um, as far as option one went, um, these, these units, um, the, the DM-475, it's, it's kind of a, a niche unit. We don't get a lot of, of them back as far as refurbs. Um, this is technology that uh, typically when it's, when it's placed out there, uh, sits for uh, you know, two, three, four, five years. People are, are fairly happy with it. So at this time, they don't have a refurbished version of the uh, the DM-475. 